powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on KPAX, Montana's news leader. Good evening, I'm Kent Lutzen. Nearly all of western Montana is under a winter storm warning, and the Department of Transportation is reporting many western Montana roads, snow, and ice cover. But with the very latest, let's go to meteorologist Russ Thomas with his first forecast. Russ? Yeah, and the Weather Service has actually stepped up a notch in the Flathead and Mission Valley because we have a blizzard warning, which means conditions even worse than a winter storm warning. Here's the reason why. Wind gust expected up to 45 miles per hour, maybe even higher, along with snowfall coming down. This goes through 11 a.m. tomorrow morning this blizzard warning, which is in the area shaded in red, again in the Flathead Mission Valley, about five to eight inches during that time period. What you get is whiteout conditions with the blowing snow, meaning travel dangerous out there. And again, uh, this is something, especially after midnight, that I think is going to be pretty rough. So just keep an eye on that. Otherwise, the rest of western Montana winter storm warning, which is bad enough. Snow coming down, winds northeast 25 to 40, and that lasts through 5 p.m. tomorrow. We'll have more coming up. Thanks, Russ. The latest mass shooting has sparked dialogue across the nation for Congress to act on stronger gun control or focus on mental health. But as a Florida community mourns the 17 people killed during another high school massacre, it was the calls for national-wide gun reform that rang loud. Jerrica Duncan was there. We are going to be the last mass shooting. Emma Gonzalez joined the chorus of people at this anti-gun rally in Fort Lauderdale. We are going to change the law. And it's all going to be due to the tireless effort of the school board, the faculty members, the family members, and most importantly, the students. The students. They're demanding a change to our nation's gun laws to stop people like the alleged shooter, 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz. Do you think it will happen again? The fact that we personally are speaking out this time, I just really hope it makes a difference. On Friday, the FBI admitted to receiving a tip last month from someone close to Cruz who claimed Cruz had spoken about committing a school shooting. The potential of the FBI to miss something is always there. We do our best. We have no, some protocols to prevent these things. Uh, we will be looking into where and how uh, if something with the protocol broke down. Cruz was no stranger to law enforcement. Broward County Sheriff's records revealed 20 calls for service during the past few years over disturbances involving Cruz and his younger brother. The report obtained by CBS News shows that on September 28, 2016, police were on the scene with the Department of Children and Families to check on the health and well-being of Nicholas Cruz. The report said Nicholas suffers from mental illness. He has been cutting his arms, his mother said, to get attention. It goes on to say he has mentioned in the past that he would like to purchase a firearm. Classmates say they were well aware that Cruz was a danger. You didn't know this kid! Okay, we did! This isn't just a mental health issue. He wouldn't have harmed that many students with a knife! And how about we stop blaming the victims for something that was the shooter's fault? Several students I spoke to said the rally is only the beginning. Next week, they plan to take their message to the state capitol in Tallahassee. Jerika Duncan, CBS News, Parkland, Florida. And back in Missoula for the first time, the University of Montana's Black Student Union is hosting a Black Solidarity Summit. The summit will last two days with representatives from Black Student Unions, African Student Associations, and Black Studies programs around the Northwest. All will be in attendance to address issues of racial discrimination, political disenfranchisement, and social organization, as well as black academic enrollment, retention, and recruitment at their respective campuses. Organizers hope that people will leave this year's summit with a new perspective and more knowledge on the subjects they hope to discuss. We're moving in a really great direction. I'm excited to see, you know, what the next 50 years brings. It was started by some really awesome people and I'm just so honored to be a part of a legacy like this one. 2018 marks the 50th anniversary of the Black Studies program at UM. The program at the U began in May 1968 and it is making it the third oldest in the U.S. Over 100 Valley residents towed their artifacts to the Missoula Art Museum today to receive appraisals at the Celebrity Appraisal event. Expert local appraiser Tim Gordon and Grant Zaheko from Washington sat down and poured over hundreds of Missoula treasures from paintings to ceramics to weapons. Community members dug out family heirlooms and were given information on historical background and pricing. 
It is important to note that the appraisals evaluated by Gordon and Zaheko are purely based on their professional expertise. This means that they are not legally binding or facilitating a sale. Missoula Art Museum event coordinator Lily Scott says events like these are invaluable. So events like these allow us to keep being a free admission museum with compelling public programming and um, impressive exhibitions. Gordon and Grant Zaheko travel the country on PBS's Antique Roadshow and the run Gordon appraisals and GZ auctions respectively. And new tonight, President Donald Trump is defending his election to the nation's highest office. His tweets come just a day after the Department of Justice charged 13 Russians with interfering in the 2016 presidential election. CBS News' Laura Podesta tells us what experts are advising the U.S. government to do now to protect the nation's democracy before this year's midterm elections. Information warfare. A surprise indictment from Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein Friday formally accused 13 Russians and three Russian companies of meddling in the 2016 U.S. election. With a budget of more than $1.2 million per month, the Russian nationals created hundreds of fake social media profiles. They posted attacks on Hillary Clinton while praising Bernie Sanders and then-candidate Donald Trump. On Twitter Saturday, President Trump wrote, Funny how the fake news media doesn't want to say that the Russian group was formed in 2014, long before my run for president. Maybe they knew I was going to run even though I didn't know. It's ultimately about driving wedges, sowing distrust, and having us point fingers at one another. U.S. intelligence officials say Russian interference is far from over. Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats says Russia will try again. There should be no doubt that Russia perceived that its past efforts has, as successful and views the 2018 U.S. midterm elections as a potential target for Russian influence operations. Cyber experts have suggested improvements for election security, replace paperless electronic machines, upgrade hardware and software that supports voter registration, and conduct post-election audits to confirm results. Sergei Kislyak, who served as Russian ambassador to the U.S. during the time of the alleged election meddling, said on Saturday neither he nor his staff interfered with U.S. politics. Laura Podesta, CBS News. You remember the name Sergei Kislyak because former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn pleaded guilty in December to lying to the FBI about his conversations with Kislyak before Trump's inauguration. Up next, we are in for some heavy snowfalls over the night, but just how much? Russ will have those answers coming up. Plus, some Montanans were willing to weather the storm for a cold one. Stay tuned.